Well, hello and welcome back to Feminoir Podcast. We are a podcast that reviews and analyzes films that are written by, directed by, or starring women. Um, we discuss their representation pertaining to the industry and what we see on screen. I'm Serena. And I'm Whitney. And today we will be talking about Black Panther 2, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Um, we're going to review the movie, talk about things that worked for it, things that we liked, things that we didn't like. Um, we'll go through the major plot points and kind of analyze the big overall stories and themes of this film. Um, afterwards, we will play our favorite game, FMF, a game where we rate the prominent men in the film. And then, of course, after that, we have to rate the movie itself, uh, 10 being perfect, 5 being I wouldn't watch it again, but I enjoyed it. And one being should have left it on the cutting room floor. Um, after that, we will give a shout out to our Patreon VIPs. Um, and then, of course, we'll give you some recommendations on movies that you might like if you liked this one. All right. So shall we begin? Uh, yes. So as Serena mentioned, we're um, reviewing Black Panther 2 Wakanda Forever, directed by Ryan Coogler. It's an action adventure that's about that is two hours forty one minutes long, so it is a pretty long movie. Um, I forget if the two hours forty one is with or without credits, but I know people were saying it's like a three hour movie, um, and it, it it's pretty close. Uh, mm-hmm. Currently, you can watch it on Disney Plus, starring it does star uh, Letitia Wright, Lupita Nyong, Denai Guria. Angela Bassett, and Winston Duke. Um, For those of you who don't know, Wakanda Forever is um, about the people of Wakanda fighting to protect their home from intervening world powers as they mourn the death of King T'Challa. I've pulled that summary straight from INDB. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned um, in the last film, that's that's typically what they use to promote the film. that's what they focus a lot of their marketing on like that pretty much that summary that plot Mm -hmm. and i feel like that's not at all what this movie is (laughs) about no i'm like overall i guess that's what it's about i feel Mm -hmm. like in my in like if i were to give it a synopsis i'd be like oh it's like yeah like wakanda fights to like protect their home from outside forces but then i would probably put more of an emphasis on mourning and finding a way to continue like after the death of T'Challa like Mm -hmm. I probably would have embellished that a little bit yeah it was close but yeah yeah um my first thoughts on this movie is um that it is it is a female superhero movie and it doesn't feel like that and I think it's because of how they marketed it and the fact that they didn't market it towards women. I think a lot of the marketing was very much based towards men. Um, And then they like tricked them into seeing the movie. And then once (laughs) they like watched the movie, they just didn't realize that they should be, I guess, complaining about the fact that it's a female superhero movie. It's about a good story. And they were like, let's just keep it focused on the story. Like it should be. (laughs) And it was perfect. Mm -hmm. Because I wasn't sure even if like she was going to be like Black Panther, Shuri. Mm -hmm. Because I knew like that's how it went in the comics. So I had a pretty good idea. And I was like, I feel like it would be weird if they didn't. Mm -hmm. but yeah like if you compare this to every other movie that is a superhero movie with a female superhero Mm -hmm. a female lead woman superhero they always market it as like girl power yeah like kind of dumb yeah and so like yeah like when (laughs) like i think there was a stat that i sent you let me see if I can pull it up. Where it was basically like, oh, Wakanda Forever is like the highest grossing female superhero movie. And I was like, out of how many? Because that's not a big feat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, my God, there's like five. <laughs> yeah. Um, I what so um one of the things I didn't like about this was the um 
I, the the colonizing storyline um because they don't really do enough with it like they use it to introduce um Namor and his people uh and then it's kind of like a b plot to to get um Ross the uh the American agent mm-hmm. um essentially like uh um fired for treason and then they rescue him and take him away at the end um but i felt like if you had taken out kind of like i guess mostly just like the subplot with ross um it would have been a lot shorter and a lot better um yeah and i mean just the theme of to deal with in this making this movie sorry say that again they had like a lot to worry about like making oh, yeah. movie, just in yeah. general of like plot of like losing your biggest star losing your star mm-hmm. that is like essential like mm-hmm. to not only just like the films but he embodied the character so much that like even just to continue to make the movies without him like mm-hmm. you can't replace him like you have to like fill in the gaps without being like disrespectful because otherwise people would be very upset but then yeah. to do that and then also try to keep it like connected to whatever the next phase of marvel is mm-hmm. and keep true to the original like stories and ideas of like the first black panther is like yeah <laughs> well so it is so it's a it's okay it's a love hate um thought process on on that theme because it also like the colonizing aspect also ties in greatly with um namor and his character and his emotional connection with um with shuri and i think that's great like i think that was such um a great thing for them to like bond through along with the death of like their most important person Mm -hmm. namor and his mom shuri and her brother um so I think it definitely deepened their relationship with each other. Definitely. Um, but just for pacing wise, oh, yeah. I didn't pacing like it. A little odd. I yeah. think my first thoughts when watching the movie was like, there's going to be people that love it and people that hate it. That was like my immediate thought. Like leaving, yeah. I was like, some people are going to really love this movie and some people are going to really hate it. And then immediately after that, my, that thought, I was like, but honestly, this is probably the best thing that they could have done, given the situation mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. like, the film is. I, I so... Like, like, I couldn't even imagine having that much pressure on me. Because it's like, mm-hmm. not only is it just, like, you're you're making a movie in which you have to, like, essentially, like, transfer the, like, the the man title mm-hmm. you have to mourn that like everyone collectively like in just like everyone's social consciousness is already having to mourn like mm-hmm. chadwick boseman but then to have to put all of that like emotion also into a movie is like insane and it's so soon to like when mm-hmm. he died like normally like that doesn't happen <laughs> you know like they like wait a really long time like the only other actor i can really think of like, there's only two that I can think of, and, like, they were able to finish their movies. And that's, like, Paul Walker and, um, is it John Goodman? Heath Ledger? Oh. Wait, what? He died? Not John Goodman. What's his name? He was in The Hunger Games. That was his last movie. Seymour Hoffman. Philip oh. Seymour Hoffman. Jesus, not John Goodman. I'm so sorry. They have similar, like, I get those two mixed up for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, and, like, Heath Ledger. So it was, like, they they were able to, like, finish the movies that they were in. Mm -hmm. And then, like, but it wasn't, like, oh, yeah, we're going to start. And then immediately just, like, like, that's so hard. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, at a beginning of a project. And then, like, after that, most people that are, like, that iconic and, like, aren't able to finish their movies, like... You know, they pay, like, a tribute to them, but it's not until, like, like, they don't touch the, like, it's kind of like they're off limits for a very yeah. long time, you know, like they're able yeah. to kind of like abstractly talk about it, but they aren't able to like talk about it. And then 
Mm-hmm. Like when they do, it's like like everyone's kind of like, hmm. I don't know, man, maybe you shouldn't have done that. Or like, I don't think you did that in a way that was respectful, man. But like, even just in that aspect, because I mean, like, I mean, I feel like they've been talking about similar things in the media a lot lately, as far as like being respectful to like people that have died and Mm -hmm. like telling their stories and stuff like biopics. It's almost even harder when it's fiction. I would want to argue that it's easier because it's fiction um especially considering that this is like um sci-fi fantasy because it allows the creators a way to flesh out the world a little bit more Mm. and so because like because these characters like most characters and unless you're doing like a um a biopic or a documentary because they don't exist like it is fairly easy to just kill off their character. Um, I'm glad that's what they did, too. Yeah. Instead of trying to be, like... Because, like, sometimes, you know, they'll do the thing where they just, like, replace the actor, and you're just yeah. like, uh, what the heck, my guy? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. They just, like, don't talk about it, and you're just like, that is not the same person. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I think they, they heard the the fan outcry was just saying like don't do that yeah um like we like we've loved him so much Mm -hmm. um that it would be an insult and so they're kind of like all right we hear you we're you know because you're gonna essentially be paying us we'll do what you want yeah um and then probably yeah similar to like what we were talking about when what's his face was like oh like Marvel doesn't have movie stars or something like that. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is exactly the opposite of what he's talking about. Like, mm-hmm. this is the exact reason why what he said is kind of stupid. Because mm-hmm. it's like, you can't Tarantino. have Black Panther anymore. Like, you can't have that Black Panther anymore because he will always be Chad Boseman. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of like, like, yeah, like, it's just, he... It's not that he became that character so well. So, like, his character and his person were so entwined with mm-hmm. not only just the character, but also, like, the values and ideas of the entire idea of, like, Wakanda and Black Panther and representation and all of that stuff. So it's like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> I... I feel like I'm going to be absolutely heartless when I say this, but I'm glad that they killed his character off because I don't think we would have gotten such a great movie had he lived um, or been yeah, replaced. No. Um, not because replace him. No. Cause like if, if they did, they would have focused on um, his relationship uh, to mm-hmm. talk to Charles relationship with his son and his relationship that he had with his dad. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that would have just been, more cookie cutter, more um, like a stereotypical Marvel movie that we've seen a lot. Um, Iron Man. Yeah, <laughs> Iron Man, Thor. Um, yeah. I mean, that's what happened with I mean, like, Thor, it probably would have been better than mm. those ones mm-hmm. just because there's the added layer of, like, being black. <laughs> oh, yeah. But then, like, there would just been a lot more nuance to it. And the fact mm-hmm. that, like, he got to, like, know his father and, like, we got the first movie, which it's been so long since the first movie, I legitimately forgot mm-hmm. that this was only the second movie that we've seen. Of, like, yeah. Before. That's fair. Like, I don't um, know that. Yeah. But also, like, I don't know. Did you see Thor Love and Thunder? Yeah. Did you like it? I didn't. I'm gonna take that as a no. It wasn't good. Yeah, but I had fun. If you so, if you compare uh, Thor Ragnarok with Thor: Love and Thunder, it doesn't seem like it's directed by the same director, despite it being both of them being Taika Waititi. And I think that's because with Love and Thunder, it doesn't feel like his movie. It feels like a Marvel movie. Yeah, it feels. So like I Marvel think. Was yeah, so I think. Marvel just kind of like stepped in and said like you're doing things our way like we took a chance with you and it paid off but now we're like really and worried do our thing again yeah yeah um no, so it I... felt a lot like the second Thor which mm-hmm. sucked 
Yeah, I know. It was my least favorite um, Marvel movie. It's so bad. But um, I think they would have done that again had Chadwick lived or had they kept T'Challa alive. And I don't think we would have gotten a good movie. I think because they were able to essentially like restart with another origin story, Mm -hmm. they were more willing to take a chance um, and it paid off. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I'm just glad that they like let Ryan Coogler just Mm -hmm. do the rewrite to his thing. Mm -hmm. Because if they hadn't, that also would have been a slap in the face. Oh, yeah. Like, it would have been so... He... Well, I mean, he... He's really good at listening to what people want. Mm-hmm. Whether it be his audience or his actors. Mm-hmm. Um, because uh, when when they were filming... Um, his name's on the tip of my tongue, but the actor for Namor... He came up to Ryan Coogler and he's like, hey, you know, uh, the Wakandians have the the Wakanda Forever call, you know, with the um, arms across the chest. Like, what is what what can we do? Like, as um, um, I'm I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me pull it up before I just mispronounce it entirely. The show thing. Yeah. Telecon. Telecon. Thank you. Um, I wanted to add a couple extra K's in there, but. <laughs> uh but yeah so he he and the actor both together came up with the uh the clamshell hands um so that each you know um each country could have their own symbol to like represent them i thought it was cute yeah i really like i also love that actor this is like it's kind of dumb that they say this is another one of those things that's just meh it's kind of dumb that they say they're introducing his actor like it's his introduction movie because he's been in movies they just haven't been like american movies or like hollywood is that how they're introducing or is that the introduction they're talking about or are they talking about um his introduction into the marvel cinematic universe i don't know because they just say introducing so and so in the like Mm -hmm. just the credits like his name Mm -hmm. instead of like so and so as this and Aquarta. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I... he's been in movies before and like TV. Like he's been an actor for, like he has credits. So I don't know why you said introducing as if he's never been in a movie before. Um, I took it as he was being introduced as um, like into the, the Marvel cinematic, cinematic universe. Like as Namor. Yeah. The only reason He's I even listed that was as they don't they normally mm-hmm. say like introducing name as character. I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I think it depends. I think it depends on the movie. It depends on the director, the studio. I think it just depends on a whole bunch of different factors. Mm. Although I don't think um uh did Dominique Thorne get an introduction as Riri or yeah or even Ironheart? Um not Ironheart. I don't think they put an introducing thing because she was in a movie. Was it a movie? She was either in a movie or a show that was popular. I just can't remember which one it is. Oh. Okay, but not for Marvel. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Regardless, all the actors in this movie did phenomenal jobs. Mm-hmm. That was the other thought I had was, holy crap. They acted the crap out of this movie. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> I was oh, like, yeah. you're joking. They did so good. Like, I was like... Um, by their performances. I was like, you guys, you outdid yourselves. Uh, Didn't... Did Angela Bassett... Did she actually win, or was she just nominated? 
She was nominated. Okay, but she didn't win. I think she won a Golden Globe. Gotcha. I think. That's what I'm trying to look up right now. She's the only Black woman nominated for lead actress in a film, or supporting actress in a film. The other woman of color nominated for supporting actress is Stephanie. From Everything Everywhere All at Once for her role as um I don't remember how to say the name. I think she did win. An Oscar? No. Um Golden Globe. Oh, okay. I was like, the Oscars haven't happened yet. <laughs> no, no, yeah, not yet. She made glo- yeah, she made Golden Globes history by winning Best We're Supporting Actress. Party. <laughs> yeah. We can do a Discord Oscars party. We should. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be That'd be cute. Probably snarky or s- sassy. Because I, I just find them so great. boring. No, I just like like we should talk about how eh, they are. Everyone should join <laughs> us. <laughs> Ouch. And criticize the Oscars. Um, anyway, back to Black Panther. <laughs> back to the Black Panther. Um, yeah, so I guess like my initial thoughts were pretty much just like they did a great job with what they had. I thought that they did a really good job of like taking a break a little bit from like the Marvel like advanced cutter things. formula. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was like they did a good job by just making a movie and like it very much is just like a filler movie to kind of give you like information that you need for like whatever's going to happen next. But like they did it in a way that was very meaningful and respectful. And they acted so well and told a good story that it, like, it doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. I don't know if I agree with it being a filler movie, but um, I could see where you're coming from. Or filler as in, like, it didn't really, like, as a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Mm -hmm. there wasn't anything that happened that was, like, absolute, like, other than the fact that there's another world power that has vibranium yeah there's like nothing else really like huge that's gonna impact other stories i guess like other uh superhero stories i guess if that makes sense agree to disagree but aside from the vibranium thing agree to disagree but i didn't make all of my i didn't write all of those thoughts down so <laughs> if if <laughs> for those of you who are Marvel fans um who do follow the comics and uh the news new phase, um I'm sure you've already heard all of it through TikTok or through Instagram. Um if you haven't and you do want to know more, I suggest go and watching those because like it does talk about like how it will how everything does connect um and will connect in the bigger world. Um but agree to disagree with Serena. Or I guess like I'm I'm saying it isn't like they didn't make a movie that had a bunch of plot lines and like origin stories to kind of bring them all in. Like we had two origins. Well yeah, but they didn't do like the Spider Man in Civil War type thing, you know? Like there wasn't like a huge like fight scene just to bring them in. Like they brought them in in a more down to earth like the same movie. Which one? Spider-Man? <laughs> no. Black Panther. No, like, they brought in, like, Riri, and, like, yeah, she's, like, Iron Man and whatever. But, oh, like, okay. the way that sorry, they brought her in. three origin Man. stories. Yeah. I am part, sorry. But, like, they didn't do it in a way that was, like, the purpose of her in this movie is to become Ironheart in the film. Like, this film. Like, that's going to happen in another one. And it wasn't I like mean, she was already Ironheart and was like making her debut as like a superhero kind of a thing. She, like it's just like a character introduction. I mean, agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> because she, when she, when they uh, went to her garage, 
they had um the the hat she had her suit there and she said that there was a whole youtube channel dedicated to sightings of her and then um i mean she only had like a couple days to actually build her suit um in wakanda so she had plans for it and everything um yeah, I think but I mean, she, like, if it was like the introduction, the introduction to like Ironheart, they either would have shown us, like, they're shown her being like more vigilante esque than just like student at MIT kind of vibe. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, I Toronto. still disagree. <laughs> I still disagree because she does have these great Iron Man par- uh, parallels um, when she fights. I already like her better than Iron Man. Um, I want to see more of her before I make that decision. Mostly because, um, I gotta admit, I liked Robert Downey Jr.'s audacity as Iron Man. Yeah, he did that well. I think I just hate it because I'm like, white men always have the audacity. Yeah, and he could get away with it. <laughs> like, oh, when he does it, it's cute and charming. Mm-hmm. I'll agree when with Ramonda that. When yeah. does it, everyone's like, oh, my God, I can't believe she's not going to give us my brainium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, no, I, I. I guess, yeah, I think it just didn't feel like the purpose of having them in it was to, like, introduce them as, like, their superheroes, but more to introduce them as, like, characters. That's That's fair. That's a way to say that. That's fair. (laughs) I don't agree with it, but I see where you're coming from. The other thing that I thought about, um, about, like, when I first came out of the movie was, like, wait, how long like when does this movie take place in the mcu <laughs> i was um, like is this after the blip and i i had to look it up so i did look it up and i found the answer mm-hmm. because i guess in this movie um when they bring up nakia mm-hmm. she's been gone for six years mm-hmm. and they say she left right after the like blip like right after Chitala and shuri like disappeared So that was her losing them the first time. Mm -hmm. And then we learned that um, I'm sorry. It's been five years that Nakia has been gone, which was the blip. This movie is taking six years after the after the death of T'Challa. So like Tatula dies in the beginning, and then we skip to a, a year later. Okay, yeah. You had me confused. And so essentially, Tatula died in the same year that he got back. That Shireen mm-hmm. like, came back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, that sucks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cruel. <laughs> it is. I was like, that's even worse because it's like they were already like the last Black Panther movie essentially was T'Challa coming to terms with the death of their father and him having lost his father without really feeling like he got the the closure. And then through becoming Black Panther was able to get that closure and kind of like understand like, okay, yeah, like your heroes, your father, like they make mistakes too. And it's my duty as like the next in line to not only understand those mistakes but to also like take the responsibility and like fix it Mm -hmm. so that it doesn't continue into a vicious cycle and so then you get this movie and it's like tenfold because not only did shuri also lose her dad she lost her brother and then she loses her mother all within a span of a year for her literally like and, and people want to know like, why, why is so she angry? so angry? <laughs> and I was like, y'all, what do you mean? Why is she Her so family's angry? dropping left and right. Literally everyone's dead. Jesus. Like, she was gone for five years, just in a blip. Comes back, immediately her, her brother dies. Like, her dad's only been gone for so long. And then her mom dies in this. 
Like, mm-hmm. dude. Let her grieve. Yeah. And I think and, that, like, and she's got the expectation, call. too, of, like, also having to take on the throne. Like, now that her entire family is dead. And she's, like, still this kid who's exactly. trying to grieve. Yeah. Like, when, when what's his face? When M'Baku was, like, mm-hmm. you've been too much to be considered a kid anymore. I was, like, for real. Yeah. Like, that line hit. Because I was, mm-hmm. like... Like, she's like, I want to burn, like, I'm not sure, like, if we end up, you know, having to burn the things, I'm not going to be able to stop because I have too much. Anger. Anger. Yeah. Which I think was really, I, so, I mean, at the core, this movie, um, when it comes to Shuri, is, you know, revenge won't bring back the, um, the people that you love. Mm -hmm. Um, you have to let go of your anger and show mercy, um, which is, it's very, it's a very common theme for, uh, superhero movies. But I also think that it has an extra layer because Black Panther is kind of like the surrogate or Black Mm -hmm. Panther as like a story in general is a surrogate as like an Afrofuturistic story of a way for like the Black community to be like what would happen if we were never colonized and like Mm -hmm. all the generational traumas that we've had too Mm -hmm. and so like every single person almost any time there's any any time anything happens to a black person where it's like so many like police shootings all of that stuff it's like any time that happens like we are sure Mm -hmm. like i'm gonna burn the world because this keeps happening and everyone's like no you can't do that because you're gonna make yourself a target and so like I feel like in this film, being able to kind of embody all of that feeling, because, like, the time that this came out, too, Mm -hmm. both times, actually, that it's come out, there's been a significant death in the Black community, Mm -hmm. to which it's kind of like, we're all angry, and we're all sad, and we have to mourn in some way without making it worse for ourselves and others. (laughs) And I think that this film using T'Challa in that way it was like perfect and then to also Mm -hmm. parallel it with Namor and like having to be like we both have to confront this idea because us fighting isn't gonna fix anything either even like we're both fighting when the real enemy is still out there yeah Yeah. and so I really appreciated that they took that plot line well i they gave it depth they didn't keep it as the the typical shallow um movie plot that most superheroes use it as yeah um they they made it fit to the world and they made it um new Mm -hmm. i think what also helped with that is that it wasn't just an individual like issue Mm -hmm. like i feel like a lot of times like like if you were yeah take like iron man iron man's mad why is he mad because his dad he's got all this trauma with his dad but he's the only one Mm -hmm. in this movie everyone is feeling this trauma and this Mm -hmm. like sadness and like mourning like even when it's namur he doesn't know t'challa but he's faced the same things Mm -hmm. like generationally like it's so in depth and it's like a collective sadness that it, it feels a lot different than one of the like individual stories yeah i agree um which is why i think they did it really really well yeah they did a really good job and i think just to even just have the movie just be like you know what we have to mourn (laughs) and Mm -hmm. as a community we've got to do it as a community Mm -hmm. so i'm really glad they just let him make this movie instead of trying to just like steamroll yeah yeah go right by it you know like that would have sucked and i'm glad we got this movie and i know a lot of people like they didn't like this movie because they're like it feels horrible watching this movie and i was like no yeah (laughs) it sucks like i don't like nobody feels good watching the movie because like it's very sad and like a lot of bad things happen Mm -hmm. it's kind of heavy but i was like Mm -hmm. i feel like that's exactly what it needed to be oh yeah um but i, but I understand she, not liking it for those reasons because yeah <laughs> yeah it, i mean it handled a lot of heavy topics um mm-hmm. 
death being the most prominent one, um, coming right, coming during a pandemic too, when a lot of people have um, lost loved ones to just things that, to stuff that they can't control. Mm -hmm. Um, And so just watching- a large scale level too. Yeah. And so watching um, someone else go through that while they're potentially going through it too, um, I could understand that. And then not even just um, the the death death and loss aspect of this movie, just everything else that it touches on is not like lighthearted subjects. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think it made a lot of people kind of like take a look at themselves. And yeah, like, <laughs> no offense, not a lot of superhero movies actually discuss colonization. <laughs> oh no, yeah. Um. So I can I can understand why they thought it was a hard film to watch. Mm-hmm. Um but I think it was a needed film. Me too. Uh speaking of when they were filming it though, um did you hear about the uh controversies that Letitia Wright had while filming? I think she said something like kind of anti-vax once, right? Yeah. Right, so, filming. yeah. So during filming, she um, liked and shared a post from a pastor who's very anti-vax, transphobic, homophobic. Mm. Um, and, you know, people came out saying like, you can't do that. Like you're a movie star. Like a lot of, you've got such a big platform. Like anything you say is going to influence people. And if you should be influencing people, you should be influencing them to you know, a better way, Um, which at the time when she did that, I was just kind of like, I was mad at her because like, I kind of like agreed with that general thought process. But then at the same time, you know, she is just as human as everybody else. And so if she wants to have her own thoughts and her own beliefs, she should be allowed to, whether I agree with them or not. Um, Because if we start canceling people for stuff like that, then, I mean, why is Tom Cruise still working as a Scientologist? Um, yeah, like, okay, sure, be mad at that. But if you're going to be mad at her, <laughs> be mad at all the rest of them, too. Yeah. So, I mean, I highly do not agree with any of that. Um, but, I mean, like, upon reflection, I do realize, like, I judge too fast. Um, I think there is some... Well, I want to say that there's some truth to it being like as a public, as a popular public figure, you know, she should have um, correct and informed thoughts on everything. But um, I feel like that is not fair um, to hold up any type of star or public figure to such a standard. Um it's weird, yeah. It's like you c- can only hold them up really to the standards that you would hold yourself up to. Mm-hmm. Which, like, yeah, they can be high, but also the parasocial relationship that you have with them yeah. don't technically owe you that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I did have to reflect <laughs> on a lot of <laughs> on on a lot of my feelings regarding um, movie stars and what. I think they should be allowed to believe because I realized like that wasn't fair. Um, Especially considering like, why, like, why should I have such strong feelings against that? When, like I said, like Tom Cruise um, is allowed to be um, Scientologist. And like, that's just kind of like a one thing that everybody knows, but like there are lots of other stars who got canceled for also being anti-vaxxers. Um, and I was like, it's kind of different, like if you're black, because you've mm-hmm. always been, if you're like black, queer, or any type of minority in the U.S., you've been like guinea pigs when there's been things like this. Mm-hmm. Were you just giving them without your consent? And yeah. so there's like a lot of trauma too that goes along with that. That like I don't think a lot of people understand when it comes to like going to doctors and vaccinations. When it comes to like the black community, like. They are not eager to go to the doctor in general. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like the the track record with doctors being very racist and a lot of the science behind and sexist has been very bad. Like, yeah, like a lot of the science behind most things is not done 
with black people in mind <laughs> or like with women in mind Mm-mm. and so a lot of times like it's not until years after that you find out that the medication you've been taking has been making your situation worse so like to have that kind of thought of like oh no i'm not sure about this vaccination thing like in a time when you're all globally experiencing something you've never experienced Mm-hmm. like yeah those are going to be some fears that you have <laughs> like yeah you can express that i don't think like anyone should be i think well and i think too just beyond the fact that it was anti-vax it was the fact that it was from someone who was um a known uh homophobic transphobic mm. person um so i it for her i think it was just it, like it hit this weird trifecta <laughs> yeah um, which was just unfortunate. Um, and I think people, I think people just, I, I don't want to say they read into it too much because she, she essentially only apologized for sharing her thoughts on, um, any vax. Mm-hmm. I don't know if she, I can't remember if she said anything specifically to the pastor's other beliefs and whether or not, you know, it was someone she followed. Oh yeah. Cause it was just a tweet about the mm-hmm. vaccinations that she shared. Gotcha. Okay. So she didn't you she didn't know anything about that guy? Well, I don't know if she knew anything about okay. them, but there wasn't any other like there wasn't any verbiage in the tweet mm. against the other communities that that gotcha. pastor has is known spoken for. against, yeah. Um I think so that was that was the the first um Mm, never mind that was the second controversy um are you saying this i am yeah uh that was so that was technically her second controversy on um on the film her first one was she got injured doing a stunt um she got so injured. She like really hurt her back. I can't, I don't know if she like fully broken or not. Um, oh my God. Yeah, no, but yeah, she got, she got severely injured so badly that they did have to um, stop production and wait to um, begin filming again so that she could heal. What was controversial about this? Um, Not so much about like her, but it's just the, the should actors be able to do their own stunts like we have stunt people for a reason okay um and well because it's like tom cruise tom exactly cruise. i was like okay once again yeah yeah um well because he does all of his own stunts right and mm-hmm. he gets hurt a lot yeah and anytime that an actor like that especially your main actor gets hurt and you have to stop production you're That's you're nice. wasting like millions of dollars just so that you can reschedule everything. Um, And from someone who, who likes the production side of movies, it bothers me so much. Like, I think like if we're offering um, to give you a stunt double, if there's good reason for there to be a stunt double, because the, I believe the, the stunt she got injured on was when she's riding the motorbike and, um, she, and it uh and she gets thrown off it um she, that's what that's when she injured her back um and i don't believe you're seeing like her face specifically so it doesn't like specifically have to be her as an actor doing it mm. um yeah they're they, really pretty good about that type of editing yeah um well and and you know they've got they can find stunt doubles that look exactly like her too um, whether they use CGI or editing to, or camera angles to obscure the fact that it's, it's not her. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, she wanted to do as many of her own stunts as possible. Yeah. What I want to know is I want to know if that's actually like coming from her because she really does want to do her stunts, or if studios are using it as a way to market it. Because, you know, they do that with Tom Cruise saying like, oh, he does all his own stunts. He flies all the jets in whatever Top Gun movie he's making. Um, uh, Harley Quinn, Mario Robbie. Um, she did all of her own stunts and that ele- elevator scene where she like does that flip. Mm-hmm. Um, like she did that all on her own. 
And Zoe so- Saron does a lot of her own stunts too, but I don't know if that's mm-hmm. just like a because there are some actors that are like known for their stunts, mm-hmm. and that's kind of different. I just I worry if the studios are using it as a marketing tool mm-hmm. instead of like the actors wanting to do it specifically like themselves because they want to like also be a stunt actor. Interesting. My question was like if you're on crew for production and someone like a main actor gets injured Mm -hmm. do you get paid for the time in between or do you have to just find another job like I know like if you're in a union it's probably different than if you're like Mm -hmm. unionized. but I'm very curious because like if you're halting production are you allowed to work on a different one or like do you even know how long you're halted for they um so it it depends it depends on so many different factors but yeah. for something like this um they what would have happened is they would have halted production and they would have told people hey you know we're going to estimate that it'll be about 6 months before mm-hmm. we have to we, before we pick this up uh, excuse me um so it'll be like 6 months before we pick this up um you know, you need to find work during that time. And so mm. hopefully people can find work during that time. And I think um, hopefully they they give them like pre-notice saying like, hey, you know, like this went faster or this is taking longer. Please adjust your schedules as necessary. And if you can't okay. adjust the schedule as necessary, then you, you choose, you know, do you want to continue working on Black Panther? Do you want to continue working on whatever work that you found in the meantime? Mm. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I think the only people who would be paid not to find work would be your main actors. Just to have them on standby. They're like, you could probably change the shooting. And your director. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. They do a lot of work about. They, That's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> while, so while she was recovering, they tried to get as many, as much as they could done without her, mm-hmm. but then they just, they hit a point where Reach they have to, have to, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. Well, <laughs> now that we've talked about the movie, maybe we should analyze it. Break it down. Yeah. Break it down a little bit more. Um, so like I said, this movie happens essentially six years, um, after the blip. Nakia has been gone for five. Shuri and T'Challa have only, well, Shuri's been back for a year. T'Challa died the same year that they got back from the blip. Um, I think it's really interesting too with Shuri to have that um not only just the regular like morning thing Mm -hmm. morning plot line or like motivation I guess like the emotional the emotional conflict but to also kind of have that like science versus um Mm -hmm. spiritual aspect Mm -hmm. Um, especially with how embedded the spirituality is in Wakanda yeah Um, so that it was neat that they kind of also addressed that and a lot of her guilt kind of embodied in that but then it was also one of those things where both of them ended up being the thing that saved them Mm -hmm. Um, so like when when we open up the movie she is trying to save her brother but the first line is her praying to Bast, which is basically like the Black Panther god. Um, or if you're into Egyptian mythology, I forget what they're the god of, but they're also they generally an take god. the form of a, of a cat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which, there's the connection. That's all I have to say. Um but she's praying, and she's like, please let me be able to save my brother. She isn't able to do it. The gods don't do it. He dies. And that, in 
in itself is a lot of her inner turmoil um, and what she's dealing with throughout this whole film. And a lot of it is paralleled through Namor with him being like, we don't need the outsiders. Like we have vibranium. We have all of this stuff that's been given to us. They just want our resources. We need to strike first. Um, it kind of has the same like, oh, well, I don't know how to verbalize this. Let me. Okay, it while you're thinking. The same parallel as science versus culture, mm -hmm. whereas the vibranium that they have is part of their culture and the outsiders want vibranium for their science. Mm -hmm. um, I did look up um, what uh, Bast is as an Egyptian god. So it's Beset. And um, knowing this is actually a lot more sadder. Um, because for Black Panther, she is the goddess of protection, as she is in... Um, Egyptian mythology, but in Egyptian mythology, she's got three main um, attributes, I guess. Goddess of protection, pleasure, and the bringer of good health. Yeah. You're right, that yeah. is sadder. Because she's praying for, like, protection and good health for her brother, and he ends up dying anyways. Yeah. And even just like pitch, like in real life, Chadwick did not have good hope for mm -hmm. a very long time, and nobody knew. And it's so sad. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that dang. That was the other thing about having his death be so sudden in real life, and also in the movie. It was like they really. They didn't write a lot of fiction around his death. Like his death in the mm -hmm. as the character was very much the same as his death in real life. Well, uh, when they, rough. yeah, when they got him, when they cast him for Black Panther one, he he told them like, "Hey, you know, I I'm battling cancer. I don't know how long I'll be able to do this." Um, so they they still cast him, knowing that this could be the outcome. They just didn't know how bad it was. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so yeah, she isn't able to save him. She He dies. We see the opening credits. Which also kind of makes you sad. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it pretty much opens um, with like a UN meeting, essentially. Uh, France is attempting to steal vibranium from Wakanda. The U.S. claims that Wakanda isn't sharing resources and that they're like, you need to be sharing these resources. And Ramonda, Queen Ramonda, pretty much tells them off and is like, okay, well, you don't have a great track record with having powerful things. So, no, you don't get it. Because if we gave it to you, things would be really bad and things mm -hmm. are not bad right now. So you have a choice, either stop or war. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I love that scene. That was amazing. Because like it was a really good did one. her did her warriors like stop them from trying to steal it? But like they knew about it far enough in advance to be able to plant people there. But then they didn't arrest them and like take them to a condon jail or whatever. They brought them to the UN to their own country to everybody and was like, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh-huh. I know y'all thought y'all had something, but you don't. <laughs> and that was baller as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, Oh, you think I didn't know? Here's your uh, bad attempt at trying to steal things from us. You can t do whatever you want with them. You're welcome. <laughs> like, so good. Um, well, cause she's also trying to prove a point, too, because they, they do bring up the fact, like, you know, the Black Panther is dead. Like, you're, you're yeah. weak. Um, and she's just kind of like, oh, really? <laughs> F you. Like, again. I'm not weak. Who has vibranium? <laughs> mm -hmm. And who's asking for it? Run that by me <laughs> one more time. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> um, we also find out that in the middle of the ocean, there's just random mining crew that has a sensor for vibranium. And it's the only one that they got, which they literally quote. 
Um, and they basically actually find it in the ocean, which is crazy to everybody because they're like, I thought vibranium only existed in Wakanda. And then they get attacked by these blue warriors. And it's like a sonic attack. Honestly, mm-hmm. that was dope. I was like, yes. mm-hmm. the way the way they just decimated everyone. Like, I'm sorry. I, I that again and again. <laughs> yeah. I, when they were first introduced, I was a little confused if the singing was supposed to be diadetic or not. Um. But then we 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 do quickly find out that they're essentially um kind like of like the them. inspiration for sirens. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, because at first I was like, oh, it's just the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's weird. And then I was like, oh wait, just kidding, it's them. The thing mm-hmm. that really got me was I was so confused as to why they were blue. And I actually didn't get it until the second time I watched the movie, which is that's on me. <laughs> I would I was just going with the fact that like the plant turned them blue because they lived underwater like i didn't really question it no but they're blue because they don't have as much oxygen in the air as they do in the water i uh-huh. was like oh duh like when you can't breathe you turn blue <laughs> that's true i didn't think about that i, I like, just i just didn't question it colors and i was like why are they changing colors i was so confused and then i was like i'm an idiot <laughs> it's because they can't even breathe they're not getting enough oxygen But yeah, um, that scene was amazing Mm -hmm. and terrifying. Like, like I was actually kind of, like, scared for a little bit. I was like, oh, they're just walking to their deaths. Like, yeah, that's crazy. Um, Yeah, so everybody dies. Like, I don't think a single person from this lives. I, so the second time I watched it, I, um specifically focused on that and they don't everybody does die like someone almost got away in a helicopter yeah a scientist but they ended up um, shooting it down flies and just (laughs) out of the sky my lord um (laughs) crazy yeah so literally every single person dies and the only reason that they know anything happened was because they were all calling for help Mm -hmm. which again terrifying um, back in Wakanda, Shuri's at work, um, and the queen grabs her because it's been a year since T'Challa's death, and they have to do their, like, garment burial. Mm-hmm. Um, and everyone's kind of worried about Shuri, which, seeing as to how, <laughs> like, how quickly it was for her to be like, oh, yay, we just survived this crazy thing that happened, Oh no, my brother's dying. Oh, he's dead. I literally just lost my dad. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone's kind of worried because she's kind of thrown herself into work and is like not taking a break and is kind of putting a lot of like pressure on herself. And so well, and we see crazy. Yeah, and we see from the first movie too that she is probably like a workaholic. Oh, um because sure. she is very smart. She is like the head of this lab. Um, so she's already probably doing like a million different things. And then to like have multiple people worried that she's now more of a workaholic. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of like, yeah, yeah, I think I think uh, someone needs to talk to her. And like she's a kid genius. So that's even mm-hmm. more pressure. <laughs> mm-hmm. A kid genius so, and next in line to the throne. Yeah. That's so sad. Mm -hmm. so basically they go to the river so that they can um kind of say their goodbyes they're supposed to uh burn the burial garments to end the the mourning period um but sherry basically tells her mom like i can't burn these because if i do burn them i'll burn the world with it essentially saying like i can't burn these my mourning period isn't over i'm still very much in this process um and they talk and they have another conversation kind of similar with the theme of like technology versus spirituality and like mm-hmm. which one is right, which one makes you feel better, etc. And I feel like that's also just very um, reminiscent of like the generational uh, mindset. Yeah, like the generational mindset. 
with just like younger people and older people mm-hmm. just in general <laughs> well they they show that too with um Okoye and mm-hmm. um um let me pull up her name because i do have it here McKee uh, or Michaela? what oh i just called her by her actor's name <laughs> oh no Aneka. yeah yeah because um Aneka and shuri are friends and they both um seem to want to like um innovate yeah uh, how the the warriors fight and Okoye is very traditional and she's just kind of like no we've done this this way for a thousand years we're going to keep doing it this way for a thousand years mm-hmm. um and then as the movie goes on you do see Okoye um kind of overcome her bias yeah she embraces it a little bit <laughs> mm-hmm. um and I think the conversation that Sherry and her mom have at the at the the river when she's like I was mourning and I felt their presence there and that they're still here and that they're with us. And then Sherry says, like, oh, but that's just a construct that your mind makes up to make you feel better and to help you like process. And she's like, Okay, so what construct does your mind make up? regardless of it if if it's spiritual or not and the problem with shuri is that she doesn't necessarily have one Mm -hmm. so it like it's one of those like things of like is believing in something good or is it like can it be good can it be one of those things that can give you comfort in times of like harshness Mm -hmm. Uh, because like if you don't have those things or if you don't have those values or things to believe in you essentially are just left with nothing Mm -hmm. (laughs) you're of yourself um so that's kind of like where Sherry's at in this moment. She doesn't really have anything, regardless of if it's science or uh, spirituality, because both of them failed her in her time of need. This is also when Namor is introduced. Um, he basically just like swims on in and is like, hey, what's up? Which is crazy. I don't think they had a strong enough reaction to this. I I feel like they did. I feel like um, they should have been a little more like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, we almost died. Like, I feel like they should have been angrier at, like, the, the people that are in charge of the barriers, you know? Um, I mean, they do mention it later on. um like in the next dish scene it was kind of funny too yeah because they um because that's when uh when they have the council meeting about like who is this guy Mm -hmm. and mbaku's just kind of like i don't care who he is we should just kill him like how dare he had been there you would still be (laughs) trying to figure out how to beat him okay so chill (laughs) that was funny um so they 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 do kind of talk about it they do i think have an appropriate reaction i just think um, it should have been that but like times two <laughs> that but multiplied yeah i was like man just swam in there i'm like just came upon the two most important people in all of wakanda <laughs> i i see where you're coming from i don't think it would have worked for the story Especially because they needed him to come back later in the movie. Um, yeah. Well, it's also just a huge flex on his part of like, yeah, you're not the most powerful people as you have thought, which like definitely sets that up. I was like, whoa, mm-hmm. whoa. this man mm-hmm. just, just freaking just swam in by himself. Like he didn't even need anything else with him. He just was like, oh, hey, what's up? He did have others with him, though, because they dropped off the machine. Yeah, they had the sneaky. That was crazy. Mm-hmm. Like the whole way that he did that was so like smooth, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it was like cheese. Like this man just came out of nowhere with all these threats, and then Surprise. just like peaced out. Yeah, and now I'm shook to my core <laughs> because mm-hmm. this man's very existence, the very just fact that he did this, just undermined every single thing I've ever known. Like my entire worldview is now changed. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, which is a great way to bring in, I think, as an introduction. That was that was pretty great. 
Like so far, the introductions we've gotten of the I don't know how you would say the plural of telecon. Tele. Conians? Ooh, I actually do have that in my notes. It's going to take me a moment, though. I will say the only thing I would think it would be just Teleconians. Uh, I want to say it's similar to that, if not that. Teleconians. <laughs> oh, I think it might be like Teleconians. Because I had that same question while I was watching them. Okay, yeah. Regardless, the way that they've been introduced, they are so badass. It is so cool. Mm -hmm. And, like, even though that they, like, I, this is what I love about Ryde Coogler and his, like, representations of people in the Black Panther universe is that, yes, they have their, like, traditional garments and their traditional clothing, but at no point in time are they ever portrayed as being, like, low-tech or underprivileged or, like, malnourished, Mm -hmm. you know? Like, this is one of those things with, like, Afrofuturism that I love is that, like, they intermix the idea of technology and being savvy and having the same privileges that the rest of the world has. Like they're not seen as some third world country. Like they're not seen seen as like people that like need help or like they're um, primitive, you know? Yeah. And so I like that he stayed in that realm with both the Talakanians and the Wakandans. Mm-hmm. And that neither one of them are seen as primitive in any any scene ever. Like they but they still are able to have their traditional garments and the the um connection to like their cultures. Mm-hmm. Which is dope. What happens after that? Oh yeah, That's so true. he basically mm-hmm. says like, hey, um, we were just almost attacked. You're welcome, by the way, because we stopped it. We have vibranium. They found it. You need to bring us these people that are super close to finding out about our existence. And, and like, we're going to rage war on them anyway. But, like, y'all are the ones, Wakanda, that were like, hey, we have vibranium. And we're going to make it known to the world now that we have vibranium, a.k.a. the plot of the last movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, holding them accountable do we hold these uh things just for ourselves, or do we share it with people that need it versus now that they have decided to kind of share their resources and like their knowledge with people so that there isn't the disparity between like the communities and you know y'all watch the movie um now that they've done that now people of power are trying to find a way to harness it for themselves. And so in doing so, they've now placed a threat on Telecon. And he's like, this threat is because of you, so I'm putting it on you to solve this issue. And then he just pieces out and is like, yeah, so find out who made this machine, who's tracking vibranium, and um, bring them to me. <laughs> uh yeah so that's fun i think out of all of um the marvel like introductions Mm -hmm. he has one of the better ones um him and killmonger dude hi key well it's because they're both like villain Technically, they're villains they're with the, the point. villains of the story, but they're like, yeah. yeah, like they have a very reasonable, <laughs> like reason, you know, mm-hmm. like the re- their motivations make complete sense, and they're very personable and relatable. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I like keep this trend going because I. <laughs> Can they just give Ryan Coogler all of the stories? Like, what would happen if he became, like, like, Marvel's... What was that guy's name? Kevin Feig? Oh, yeah. Um, (laughs) Feige? I... So, I worry um, what is gonna happen with Namor. Because, like, basically, they killed off Killmonger because they couldn't have a villain that made sense. Right? (laughs) Yeah. So... 
I mean, to an extent, like Namor does have, like he does make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so I worry what that means for his character because I feel like he's he might die soon. I don't think so because I'm pretty sure they're planning on making a solo movie for him. Probably Which in my head makes like one of the criticisms of this movie was that like they felt that um like Telecon could have been like prettier and like more fleshed out as a nation. But I think <laughs> the reason that it isn't is because they are planning a solo movie and they can't make too many artistic decisions about that because mm-hmm. like they're gonna need the solo movie. <laughs> they're they're gonna wanna be able to flesh all of that out for the solo movie. Mm-hmm. They just need to have something generic for this movie as yeah. like, the introduction. I when I so when I first watched this movie in theaters, right? You know, you've got the big screen, um, and you've got a lot of diffused light. Mm-hmm. And beyond just the diffused light, the um the contrast is specifically like set for this movie, right? Yeah. Um So watching, watching and seeing Telecon on the big screen, beautiful. Loved it. I could see everything. Having to rewatch it at home with my brightness all the way up, I still could hardly see anything. Yeah. Um, and I was like, the other part of that is like, they're literally so deep into the ocean. He had to bring a light source down to them. Mm-hmm. So it was like... What did y'all expect to see? <laughs> I just made like, the light source maybe like the glowing or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like the bioluminescent thing, maybe. Which, like, I feel, again, like, they're probably going to do that in mm-hmm. when we actually get to experience Telecon from mm-hmm. the Telecon point of view. I just, as long as we're able to see it at home, I'll be happy. <laughs> Oh, I'm I'm one of those people that changes my TV settings. Like, I did, I did. I still didn't see anything. Yeah, like there's there's certain shows where I'm just like, can y'all figure this out? Because this is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I hate having to change my TV settings all the time, but I will like I'm I be changing them all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> back to the back to the movie. Okay, so no more pretty much gives him this ultimatum. Bring them the scientist or else. Not really sure what the what else part was. I can't remember. Do you remember? Um, like he wasn't gonna attack the Uh no, I don't think he really gave a what else. At least if he did, I I didn't write it down. Um but I mean right after that scene. Um, you've got Sherry deconstructing the vibranium and whatever he threatened, or the vibranium detecting machine, um, and whatever he, um, insinuated had them frightened enough that they took him seriously. Yeah. And they're like, you can't tell anyone because nobody knows about their existence except for them now. Um, Sherry is able to kind of track it down to this kid at MIT, who is Riri. And she's awesome to be young, black, and excellent. Am I right? <laughs> anyway. Well, so before they before they go to Riri, though, Okoye has to convince Queen um, Ramonda to let her take Shuri with her. And Shuri to help. wants to go. Kind of. Like, Shuri's not really in the conversation until she's just kind of, until Okoye had already pretty much convinced uh, Ramonda to let her take her. And yeah. Okoye wants to take her to, like, help break her out of, you know, her funk to help mm-hmm. help her process her grief, get it her out of the lab. sense to bring her because she's the only one that could talk to this MIT kid, like, mm. which, yeah, is part of the convincing part. Mm-hmm. Um, Sherry basically is like, yeah, I'm going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when do we leave? Um, they go, end up at MIT. Essentially, Sherry's like, oh, my God, it's a kid. And kind of has, she kind of makes the 
she makes the decision before anybody else says that, like, no, I'm not just going to give her to Namor and have him kill her. Like, mm-hmm. what? that's not me. Why would I do that? This girl's basically like me. Um, Ravi's like, oh, am I getting recruited? Because that'd be dope. Which, like, honestly, <laughs> she should have been being recruited. My lord. She is great. Um, the interaction between all of them was just hilarious through mm-hmm. this entire sequence. Um, because you've got Riri being like, oh, you're the princess of Wakanda. Am I being recruited? And then to find out that, no, she's not being recruited, but you made a thing that is like threatening our very existence. And she's like, what are you talking about? And they're like, the vibranium detector. She's like, I made that like out of spite. <laughs> like, yeah. Project. Because then now you also know that the U.S. government just took her stuff without her consent and are using it without giving her any payment or anything as she should be for her invention. First of all, agree. Second of all, um, most colleges have a clause within their charter saying like anything produced at the college is the college's um, property, intellectual or physical property, essentially. Yeah, but regardless, nobody is giving her credit for any of this. Mm -hmm. And, like, MIT isn't using it. The government is. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, I keep probably sold it to the government. Yeah, that's just, that's messed up on so many levels. But honestly, like, what else would we expect from (laughs) the U.S. historically Mm -hmm. when it comes to Black people and their inventions? Um. Track record's not great. <laughs> so I was like, oh, so that's a little detail they're going to throw in here. Nice. Um, and basically, they I like that they kind of just tell her exactly what's up. They're like, no, you made this vibranium detector and now this guy wants to kill us. But like, she isn't able to say that because Ruby's like, y'all are trying to take me, aren't you? Like, I can't just be going places. Like, I'm in trouble. She's like fighting back. Um, she tries to leave, I think, through the bathroom, and then, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> Okoye comes out of the bathroom, she's like, oh my god, she has a spear, and then she hides in the corner, which is just a great moment of not only funny, but also foreshadowing. She throws the thing at Okoye, and Okoye is like, oh, I like her, she's gonna, like, fight back, and then Shuri does the thing of, like, oh, you know what? It's fine. Like, let her protect herself. She can do it. Yeah, she can fight the flying sea god that wants to kill her on her own. And she's holding this giant heater. And then Okoye's like, "Mm mm-hmm, yeah, she can kill. Yeah, let her protect herself with her heater. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, you go on. You go on with your heater. (laughs) Which is great foreshadowing, because essentially that is what ends up getting them the the upper hand. Yeah. The more is the giant heater. (laughs) um so i just i think i noted it down as satirical reverse um psychology dude so funny and i was like that honestly like (laughs) just like the way that they did it is such a black thing to do too like (laughs) the amount of times when you're like oh i'm like as a young kid when you're Mm -hmm. like running around and you know you've got your like cousins and your aunts and uncles and your grandma and you're like okay I'm gonna go do this thing and you're like they're like hey be careful over there like don't do that and then if you decide you're gonna do it be like okay fine face those consequences go on with with (laughs) you and your tiny self like go do it fine try it Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I was like that's just so funny I love that little interaction it was great um so yeah that convinces uh, Riri that she is not going to shed this by herself and she takes them to her garage in which the feds show up which pisses her off obviously because like she's got all this stuff going on in her garage all these projects and like now the feds are at her door she's like seriously you guys maybe I should go and fight the sea god <laughs> with wings because like they didn't bring the freaking feds to my door um which is just funny. And basically, they're like, okay, we have to get out of here without, you know, causing another international uh, what is incident. It? International incident, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then we also have to get her out of here. Uh, we're not taking her to Namor, so we got to get her out, but also not tip off Namor or his guys that, like, we're doing this. 
super covert. Um, and they essentially, they only fail because the worst guys do know that they're there and they intercept and they take Shuri and Ravi. Well, well, they don't the, take. Yeah, the the chase scene um, from the FBI. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's well. That's where you get um, the first parallels between Riri as Ironheart and Tony Stark as Iron Man. Yeah. Um, and you you get to see yeah you get to see how like she pretty much came up with like the same designs he did when he was first starting out, and then um. They also have like in a couple. Garage. Shuri also is like looking at the plans. Yeah. Like without getting a good look. And she's like, is this Stark's tech? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, she, right away she notices that it's similar. Mm-hmm. Um, a little Easter egg. Yeah. Um, but then also, you've got the first fight um, when Namor's people show up. You've got the first fight between Okoye and Atuma. And Atuma yeah. pretty much, like, beats the shit out of Okoye. Yeah. But Okoye does do some great fights. Like, oh, yeah. That was great. Yeah, was she's great not a fight. bad fighter. He just overpowers her. Oh, yeah. Because they have the upper hand of the fact that they have not ever existed before. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't know anything about our enemy. Um so yeah, they basically are going to take Riri, but Shuri jumps in and is like, no, take me to see um, your leader. Seeing as to how I'm the leader, I want to do a talk. Mm-hmm. Like a parlay kind of situation. Um, so they take them, and Okoye is pretty much knocked into the ocean and unable to catch up with them. And so she has to go back to Wakanda without them, which sucks but. Um, yeah. We don't see the scene where she's back in Wakanda yet. Yeah. We, yeah. we get um, Agent Ross oh. who has to investigate the bridge the next morning. Um, so he's like investigating it, but the director also is mm-hmm. present. Um, which honestly, I don't know how people felt about her as like, or how people feel about her in general. But she's funny to me. <laughs> Ooh, strong I disagree. <laughs> I hated her character the most. Um, I just, I think she was poorly written. And I don't know if because she was poorly written, the actress just didn't have a lot to work with. Or if she was just also not good. But she's my least favorite character. No, yeah, I don't think they wrote a lot for her. Because she's made cameos in other, like, Marvel things. Mm -hmm. And, like, every time it's kind of just, like, really short and brief and, like, oh, yeah, I'm the big man in charge kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Which is, like, all we get from her. So, yeah, I agree. I don't think she's she's well written. I just think that she's funny. (laughs) Like, I'm pretty sure. Because the actress has, like, a lot of... um, experience with like improv being on like Seinfeld and stuff mm-hmm. and like she does more improv than she does just acting in general so like most of the lines that she said I'm fairly certain that they were not written and that they don't really give her things gotcha <laughs> I'm, okay like, that makes just from her interactions that is, like yeah that makes sense that vibe makes sense like, having seen her do, like, maybe more recent things, like, I think she was in that show, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, with uh, Seinfeld mm. at some point. And, like, <laughs> they just, like, it's so dumb. Like, they end up, like, going to the supermarket, and they're, like, having this, like, random conversation. But she's, like, very, she's very good at just pulling out random, like, one-liners just to drop mm-hmm. into, like, a situation. With, like, complete confidence. Like, I'm fairly certain most of those lines that they <laughs> were not written for her. They just kind of told her to go do something. <laughs> gotcha. I don't know. That's my mm-hmm. feeling. And I think it's funny. Because that's what's happening in my head. <laughs> but I did like her line when she, like, shows up. And Ross is like, oh, like, you're here. And she's like, yeah, whatever. Like, I'm here. And the the guy that is like in charge of the crime scene 
is like, hi, director, I'm so-and-so, special lead and in charge. And she goes, oh, good for you. (laughs) (laughs) I love that line just because I'm like, yeah, good for you. Okay. (laughs) Like... Like, it's it's just funny because I think that's literally done in contrast to everyone else keeps saying, like, oh, this is so-and-so. Like, she's the director and she has to constantly remind people that she is director, whereas this guy just, in, like, introduces himself as, like, I'm a special agent <laughs> in charge. She's like, yeah, wonderful, I don't care. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's just, like, one of those things as a woman where you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm aware you're a doctor, sir. Oh, you went to MIT, cool. Good for you. (laughs) What does that have to do with the situation right now? Do you want to just, like, get to the point? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I just thought it was funny. Um, Which is the only reason I wrote it down. Um, But at the crime scene, while they're there, Ross finds... um, I have no idea how to say the name of the beads, but the little communication beads that Mm -hmm. Shuri wears. um, He finds them, and he pockets them. I didn't write their name down. I write everything down like, except that, apparently. I think I may have written them down, like, way later in my notes, but, like, I, I can't write them down until, or I didn't write it down because no one says the name of the beads until um, Queen Ramonda is asking Shuri's AI if they can track her, the beads. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah, Ross pockets the, the beads and doesn't say anything about them to the director um and then we see a koye with the counselors the counselors the council mm-hmm. of the elders and queen ramonda essentially trying to like warn the queen of um just like the sheer power and ability that the telecons have and She's like, we need to start a mission. Like, I'm thinking we should do this immediately. Like, let's not waste any time. To which she's met with, no, you're fired. Yeah. Okay. So as an audience, that moment is a gut punch. Dude. Because, like, we know, like, how far, how hard she fought. Um, And that, you know, she really does care about Shuri. And, like, we've, we've been with her since the first movie. Mm -hmm. But then when the queen, like, um, breaks it all down and just, like, you support it. (laughs) Yeah, well, no, and she just kind of, like, well, she says, like, I'm firing you because, like, you supported Killmonger. um, You ousted my family. um, Like, I warned you about this mission and you still lost Shuri. Like, (laughs) you're Mm -hmm. bad at doing your job. You're kind of like, Well, "Uh, not like her job. She's like, you're loyal to Wakanda, but... I was asking you to be loyal to me. Yeah. Okay. Like, I've lost so much that Mm -hmm. even if this feels harsh, that's not the point. Because even though, like, you're getting fired, you're going to be fine. (laughs) Whereas Mm -hmm. this is the one thing that I asked and as the queen, I wanted. And if there's anything in this moment, I will get what I want. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a better take. But yeah. Huge gut punch, though. Like, just on all, like... For Ramonda, for mm-hmm. Wakanda, for Okoye. Like, it just sucks. Mm-hmm. But her freaking speech, though. That's when I was like, oh, she better get an Oscar. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Have I not given everything? <laughs> that lives in my head rent free. <laughs> like, I'm just saying that all throughout. They, they had that part in the trailer, right? <laughs> Yeah, they did. Mm-hmm. I just keep saying it. And people are like, I'm like, enduring Black History Month. Have I not given everything? <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, she does have some points. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, she's basically asked, not only is she fired, but she's like, not even going to be like, they could have just been like, you're not general anymore. But she was like, nah, you're straight up fired. Like, you're not even going to be a part of the army. Which yeah, you're stripped sad. of everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, she's like, I had one request, and you failed. So, no, I'm not giving you another second chance. Everyone in this room has been disloyal to me personally at some point in this room. You were the last one. And I'm over it. Um, 
And then Queen Ramonda goes to Shuri's lab, talks to the AI, and realizes that she can track Shuri's beads. Um, except Ross has the beads, so when she does try to contact Shuri through the beads, she ends up talking to Ross, and Ross is kind of put in this weird situation of like, I work for the U.S. The U.S. thinks that you guys were the ones to attack us. And now I'm confused because you're hinting that there might be a bigger power out there, but you can't tell me. So now I have to just deduce everything from yeah. everything else. <laughs> I have to risk everything on your word, which I'm not sure I even trust right now. But you did save my life, so I might as well. Yeah, like I owe, yeah, like I owe a lot. So I'm going to at least do what I can to help. Without getting mm-hmm. myself in more trouble. <laughs> um, so yeah. And then we finally end up in Haiti. And we find out that that's where Nakia has been. And Ramonda is visiting Nakia and asking her for help. Um, and they also kind of just catch you up on kind of like <laughs> the time frame. Because I think... A lot of people are still confused at this point. It's like, what time is it? Who, where in history are we? Mm -hmm. So when she's able to say, like, after we lost him, it's been like five years. I had to allow myself to break, or like I couldn't go to the funeral either, because I'm assuming that they probably would have had two funerals. The first Uh... one for Shuri and T'Challa, and then the second one would have been T'Challa. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. That, I guess, like, the people who were blipped had a funeral. It's a good point. I'm going to punch myself in the gut again. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. And so, yeah, they kind of share this, like, moment of just... Like, I've missed you. There's a lot of unspoken feelings and grief that we're all experiencing, and we all have to experience it in our own way. Um, And essentially, Ramonda asks her for help. And, like, is like, you're still Wakandan, and we still love you. You're still a part of our family, like, regardless of if T'Challa isn't anymore. Um, Mm -hmm. And also asks for help for Shuri. Um, So Shuri and Riri are now in are they in telecom they're not in telecom because they'd be dead without the proper equipment so they're kind of just like in the realm of telecom there it it makes it seem yeah it makes it seem like they're on like the outside Mm -hmm. of it um kind of like an outside jail or holding cell they're very near it they're very near it for sure They're like in the cave but they're not like so deep that they won't survive no it's well because she's in um they're in an air cave, so I don't think the depth matters. Yeah. Until she leaves the air. That's why she yeah, has to wear the like suit. Legitimately, yeah. Yeah. So she's I mean the pressure. Yeah. Um, so she the is probably kill them when they're escaping. So they must not be too bad. Too deep. Well, they have the uh the thing. That Nakia uses, like the underwater ski do thing. Oh yeah, they have that, but they don't have like pressure protection because they just hold on to it. I can't remember how they actually did it. I, mm-hmm. in my mind, I assumed that they like hopped into the the ski do, and that protected them. <laughs> I don't think it matters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're in the realm of Telecan. Um, and basically she kind of finds out about Namur, where he came, where he comes from. Um, they mention the name Kukukukukan, mm-hmm. which is like Feather Serpent Sea God, I think. Um, and we get a glimpse into his lore, which is very similar to Wakandan lore, except in a different part of the world. Um, I don't know if they've existed for as long. 
Uh, like, because they got it. They found the herb around the same time as the conquistadors. Because the conquistadors were there, and that's well, the reason how... they were getting sick. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when did Wakandans find it? I don't remember. Yeah. I just know that they were not colonized. So I'm assuming... Because of that. Like, if the conquistadors were there and they were not colonized, like... Maybe they just were there the whole time. Yeah, I don't know. Regardless, this is when we kind of get a glimpse of like, okay, so the herb and its powers have existed like in other parts of the world and that it is a very similar power to the heart-shaped herb, which is Wakandan's uh, way to have the Black Panther. Um... We find out that he has no love for the outside world, um, hence his name, Namor. Um, and he basically tells a story how he's like the first mutant, which I know in comics is important because of mm-hmm. X-Men, right? Yeah. But also just for the nitpicky fanboys. That's fair. Might I also mention that Namor is hot as fuck? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um. So I, I don't know if we talked about it in one of the previous episodes, um, but I think we did uh, with Victoria. Um, But they brought up the picture. I Um, forgot about that. (laughs) Yeah. So, well, okay. So background is there's this picture floating around the internet. Um saying that they had to digitally CGI uh, Namor's package out. Um, But then they actually asked him, they're like, hey, is this true or false? And he's like, man, that's false. Someone altered it to be bigger. (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) No, that actor is so good. Because, like, if you look at just Namor and the way he, like, is his, like, body language and everything, Mm -hmm. if you look at, like, interviews from, like, when they're on, like, the red carpets and stuff, like... Mm -hmm. He's so different. Like, he really transforms his very mannerisms for, like, a character. And I was like, wow, like, that's insane. Mm -hmm. Um, He's such a good actor. I don't even remember what we were talking about. Um, We're learning about... His history. His history. Correct. Um, Yeah, so he's the first mutant... um, can't trust humans they always take the worst path um and he kind of like is able to relate with shuri on the fact that like yeah like humans are kind of the worst (laughs) Mm -hmm. um and yeah they will do everything they can with the powers that they have just to destroy each other um and they basically connect over the fact that they're both extremely angry about that Mm -hmm. um shuri isn't gonna attack first but like if she was provoked, we already know that, and she's admitted that, like, yeah, I would burn everything. Mm-hmm. Namor is basically saying, I believe that we should strike before anybody else does, so that we just eliminate the threat before it becomes a threat. And that's why he wants um, Riri. Not because she's done anything herself, but because she has the potential to do that. To whereas Shuri is still kind of on the on the end of like okay yeah like she might have the potential but there's also the potential for like a lot of good and like which one do we want etc um and this is a reoccurring theme in the black panther movies in the first one as well of like are we more worried about eliminating the threat before it becomes a threat or are we more worried about trying to cultivate an area in which there would no longer be threats um so yeah, he uh, she's like, oh, I would love to see Hello Khan, to which he makes a very funny joke about how she can't do that because she would die. And is very threatening about it. And then he's like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we have a suit. 
which I think is funny because the suit that she's given is the suit that the people that were mining earlier in the film had and that they they were like, yeah, no, we're taking this back. Because I was like, why would they have a suit if they've never had to introduce people? And I was like, oh, it's because they just stole it. Yeah. <laughs> from the guys that were mining earlier. Mm-hmm. Which I just, I was like, LOL. Good job. <laughs> um, they're like, no one else can have this. This is ours. I just love that. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah. Uh, we get to see They're very resourceful Alokan, um, a little bit of their culture the fact that he's literally able to bring the sun into the depths of the ocean and cultivate like a, a livable area for Alokanians mm-hmm. Alokanians I can't find my note on what the they're Pelican called people. yeah <laughs> um, and yeah We've kind of already talked about, like, visually what that was like. Um, And he kind of, like, essentially, like, gives an ultimatum. Well, not, like, an ultimatum at the end, but tells her, like, I'm not going to give up the scientist, but now I feel like you can understand why I need her. And Sherry's, like, again, not quite sure she wants to give in to the fact, like, oh, I don't just want to give you the scientist, but, like, maybe we can strike up a deal somewhere in the middle like we can compromise otherwise like you're gonna go to war with us and that's gonna be horrible because we can't have a war like that's gonna destroy Mm -hmm. not only us but also probably like the regular world like not destroy it but it's gonna severely harm a lot of people um so yeah like, she now understands, like, the dire situation that they're in as far as war goes. She doesn't want to start another war, which is why it's extremely inconvenient that Nakia shows up right after that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nakia shows up and is like, come on, we gotta go. But she ends up having to shoot uh, one of the, the guards that Riri and Shuri have while Queen Ramonda is talking to Namor. And trying to like distract them mm-hmm. so that they can get out. Um, they are successful, but unfortunately, while they do this, the guard dies, and they think they kill another guard too. Uh, I it's just the one. They I think they hurt another one of them, mm. but for sure, only one dies. Mm-hmm. But pretty much, yeah. Um, But, like, right after that, uh, Shuri and her mom are reunited. And um, Queen Ramonda and Riri get a meet. Mm -hmm. And pretty much right after that, like, you you don't get a lot. I'm Um, pretty sure it's, like, immediately. Yeah, uh, immediately. Um, Shuri already knows. She's like, yo. We got to prepare. Yeah. Um, like he was already crazy and now we killed one of his people. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, mad. He was gonna uh, attack us regardless, but now we all killed his people. So they come in right now. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. we um, and that's what happens. Uh Telecon attacks and they flood the city. Um the word personally attacks the queen. Yeah. Um and the queen ends up saving uh, Riri's life at mm-hmm. the cost of her own. Riri was drowning and the queen had pretty much gotten out, was able to get out of the water, but then goes back down to um, rescue Riri. And before she, and she was too weak to essentially pull her herself back out of the water. Um, and she drowned. Um, and uh, Literally Namor, as she's dying. No yeah. more comes out and he's like dude again with like chills because when he came out and was like mourn your losses mourn your dead like I'm coming back in a week you're the queen now yeah like, yeah that was a powerful moment um I know yeah I I almost want to give him an award for that speech because that was a Bro, good one. 
Yeah. Oh, like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> like, if that was, like, like, even just watching it, I'm like, oh, shit. But, like, if that had been real life. Mm-hmm. I would have shot myself. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, join or die. You yeah. join us? Or we kill you first because you're the only ones that would be an actual threat to us. Mm-hmm. Well, and it, it's kind of like um, a callback to to how T'Challa took over the throne because mm-hmm. his dad also violently died in an attack and then was just like all of a sudden expected to take over. Yeah. And now you have, you know, Queen Ramonda dying in an attack and then looking at uh, Shuri and just be like, all right, <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> what are you going to do? And so now she's forced to respond the same way that uh, T'Challa was forced to respond um, against the Winter Soldier. And it sucks, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I think I literally wrote in my notes, Ramonda dies. Fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have the second funeral in this movie. Which, okay, also, can I mention how beautifully shot the funeral scenes are? Mm-hmm. Like, that's one of those things where, like, every single time I see any of those scenes, and this honestly kind of goes for the whole movie. It doesn't, like, have the same feel as a Marvel movie, like, cinematically. Like, the way that the shots are. Like, when you're in the fight sequences, yes. But I think that's also just because, like, we know we're watching a Marvel movie. But, like, the rest of the of the movie is shot very cinematically like very indie yeah. almost like mm-hmm. like they're very much focused on like getting the most out of a frame to help the story yeah and i agree great um so yeah so we're at the funeral um and it is heartbreaking um everyone like you can feel just how hopeless everyone feels right now mm-hmm. um mbaku basically approaches shuri and is like i promise your brother that i will offer you counsel and like support um i think that's when he has the line of like she's like yeah but like i'm just a kid and he's like you've been too much to yeah you've been through too much to be considered a kid um and he essentially asks her like The elders want to know if we should be preparing for war. Like, are you gonna, like, are we gonna join him or are we going to fight? Mm -hmm. Um, And then if we are going to fight, we need to start moving people up to my realm Mm -hmm. farther away from the city. Um, She, does she give any, I don't think she gives an answer right then. Um, it it is implied that she accepts his help, because um, I think they like end up shaking hands, but she like yeah. doesn't verbally say it. Uh, but then the next scene, um, pretty much is uh, well, the next scene is Ross gets caught and gets taken away. Oh yeah, but, and they um, find out like that Ramonda's dead, and that mm-hmm. uh, the director's known he's been in contact with Wakanda the whole time. Is kind of like okay, well we're pretty sure we're going to kill their people. So like, why are you talking to them? To which she's continued to have the charade because he hasn't really been getting a lot of information, but it is enough information to tell her that maybe it isn't Wakanda. That is the issue here. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah. And they have that great line of like, when he's like, no, I'm going to side with Wakanda because, and he, this is a direct quote have you ever thought for a second what they could be doing what we would be doing if we had access and we're the only country in the world with access to this power and she replies oh i dream about that yeah which is just thematically perfect because that's Uh the entire reason like that is the entire reason that wakanda uh was hidden for so long And it's the reason that there is now this huge conflict between Wakanda and Talokan. Mm -hmm. It also kind of, like, kind of brings up the thought 
in like the sphere of like the philosophy of the the this film of like okay if Telokan was to attack first with the power that they have technically they're doing it so that they don't have any other threats which is like Mm -hmm. very similar to what she's saying in the moment of like no I would take out so many people I'd have so much power like he's still better at this point than the U.S. but he's on the edge of being the same yeah which is why it's scary Mm -hmm. like which is why he's kind of considered a villain Mm -hmm. we just understand and he has more of a reason (laughs) yeah (laughs) that way um well they make us emotionally connect with him yeah because it's like the people that were colonizing people didn't have a good reason to do that they were just doing it because they're like we don't want to have any they're greedy Mm -hmm. yeah whereas like Samoyed has a reason. <laughs> yeah. You're lucky he hasn't done anything about it yet, but he's close. He's oh, very yeah. close to just doing it. Um, yeah. After that, we get um, kind of like a large montage sequence. They have a week, basically, to prepare for war, uh, which is the ultimatum that Namori gave them. was like, I'll be back in a week. You'll either join us or you die. Um they're preparing for war. Shuri and Riri are, you know, prepping their machines. They figure out, okay, Namor gets his um, oxygen from both the air and the water. So if we are going to have any kind of um, leg up on him, mm-hmm. we're going to need to figure out how to dry him out. And so they're like, perfect. We're going to turn one of our chambers into an anti-water chamber and suck all the water out of the air mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're gonna trap a minute <laughs> so sorry never mind i i was jumping ahead never mind uh this is also when we see shuri uh with her ai thinking okay i have this bracelet that he gave that no more gave her for visiting um that has similar properties to what they know as the heart-shaped herb and so in order to recreate it she has the ai scan uh the fibers from the bracelet in hopes that those fibers and her brother's dna will have an answer on how to recreate the heart-shaped herb um she brings in okoye and is like hey like obviously i know my mom fired you but like my mom's dead now and i'm the queen so uh, like I think you should be my midnight angel, which I'm not going to lie. Okoye is right. Those things are ugly AF. Yeah. They're yeah. ugly. Mm-hmm. And midnight angel is a stupid name. Yeah. <laughs> like, girl could have come up with something a lot better. But regardless, Okoye agrees and she brings Aneka in with her. Um, we do end up finding out at the very end of this montage that shuri is successful in recreating the herb um but they have to try it out first and so she basically grabs everyone well not everyone she grabs uh riri and nakia to Mm -hmm. try the herb so this i mean so it was like i mean for me i never questioned you know whether she accepted mbaku's help or not but i think like for anyone who was this would probably be the scene where, like, it shows that she accepted his help. Because during, like, when he was saying, like, hey, you know, like, I offered um, to give you advice um, because you're, or, I want to give you advice because your brother asked me to. Mm-hmm. Um, he tells her, like, do not bur- bury yourself in your tech. And, like, as a whole, Wakanda um, is, like, a very religious country um, because they do have the Black Panther. They have Bast. They've got um, the... Uh, like um the ancestors the ancestral plane plane. yeah thank you um and so like they're a very religious country and then you have shuri who's just kind of like man i know all this stuff is true but like i just prefer my science over um all this religion and she's taking this moment to be like i know what i believe in but like i also know that this is real and that my people need this Mm -hmm. so i'm gonna not bury myself in the tech and i am gonna 
look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and she becomes the Black Panther. She recreates the herb um, mm-hmm. and brings back that part of her culture, cultural, after spending a year of doing everything she could to not even yeah, to think about having to do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's really great because it does solidify her, um, like, acceptance of her culture and mm-hmm. embracing it. And it's also one of those things where it's, like, I'm not sure even that, like, when she was going to take the herb that she thought that it was going to take her to the ancestral plane. Mm-hmm. Like, she knows, like, she's heard the stories, but she's never seen it herself. Um, like, she had Nakia stay there in case she went into, like, a heart attack and was, like, ready with, like, the beads and everything. Like, she was very scientific about it yeah but it's almost for sure as soon as she gets into the ancestral plane she's like oh and that completely flips a different switch in her mm-hmm. um because essentially she goes to the ancestral plane and it's supposed to show you the person that you're thinking of and she's thinking of her mother i thought it was the person who would relate to her the most or like yes. connect with her like, the most the person that's you're connected to yeah Mm -hmm. so she's thinking of her mother thinking that she will see her mom if she thinks hard enough about her or her brother and she's greeted with neither she's greeted with (laughs) killmonger which is like shocking dude okay one of my favorite parts of the movie like when i saw that in theaters my entire theater like the whole room just collectively gasped (laughs) It That's was amazing. So just like yeah, everyone, just like, everyone what? is shocked. It's just like, no, not I think we all forgot that he was like a Black Panther. <laughs> yeah. Like we all forgot that he was part of the ancestral mm-hmm. line and like was a Black Panther and like totally belongs in the family. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh shoot, I forgot about this cousin. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Let me reprocess this. Um and looks fine yeah like what is he wearing because that outfit did have so many favors <laughs> like, that was dope it was but also yeah. like michael b jordan could do anything and it would be hot so <laughs> there's that too um but he essentially he shows up and she's like why are you even here we're nothing alike and he's like no we're a lot alike because what you want is revenge. I was driven mm-hmm. by revenge. You wouldn't be like seeing anybody else because no one else was driven by revenge like I am and like you are now. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, is she's forced to confront the fact that she is angry. And it's kind of one of those things where it's like, if you go a certain path, you will become him. And it's, mm-hmm. it's like a warning and a like foreshadow at the same time. <laughs> well, he says, he's like, will you be noble like your brother or will you take care of business like me? So he's kind of like that. egging her on. Yeah, he's like kind of, yeah, he's egging her on. Um, and like basically also telling her that like she is capable of mm, an insane amount of destruction. Mm-hmm. The only thing that stopped her so far was all of the other people in her life, but they're gone. Mm-hmm. Um, You're and, free now to do whatever you want. What are you going to do? Exactly. Which honestly is scary as well. And mm-hmm. she basically decides like, okay, I'm going to be the Black Panther. I'm going to show everyone that I'm a Black Panther, which I love that they they like are like, yeah, she's the Black Panther because when she like jumps into the thing and she's like in the suit, everyone's kind of like, oh, she thinks she's the Black Panther now. And she's like, I recreated the herb and I took it. And she's like, Nakia's like, yep, she did. And then they just arm wrestle with them. Buck. Yeah. I was like, that's cute. <laughs> yeah. That was adorable to me. I was like, that's so fun. Like, instead of doing the whole, oh, we have to kill each other to find out who we, or like, whoever like tabs out first oh i thought it like i took it as he was testing her commitment to being like a black panther he's just like you know he i think he saw that as um you know he warned her don't bury yourself in your tech and then here she is coming in as this essentially this religious figure 
saying like, all right, let's go to war. I'm going to lead us to war as this religious figure. And he's like, mm-hmm. all right, like what happened, you know, like, yeah. From- you know, two days ago, like this wasn't and you also two days testing, ago. Like, okay, you said you recreated the herb and you took it, but is it the same? Mm-hmm. And so far, he's the only one out of everyone that's actually fought another Black Panther. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so he's kind of like, okay, we can test it, but I'm not going to like kill you for it. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have the whole thing. Cause like at the end of the movie, that's essentially what they're supposed to do is mm-hmm. the whole like, you're stripped of your Black Panther, we fight. And then whoever wins the fight, like, gets the herb. Mm-hmm. Um, to which she doesn't show up to that. So now I'm extra confused. But that's for oh. her time. <laughs> oh, I'll, I, I, I've got thoughts once we hit the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little bit later. Um, but she is like, no, we're absolutely going for war. Um, like, I'm not going to join him if he comes back. Like, I know, like, I think essentially up until this point, they were just preparing for another attack in case, mm-hmm. like, he came back and was, like, just going to attack him anyway. Mm-hmm. But now she's like, no, we're going to war. Mm-hmm. And everyone's kind of like, I mean, okay, but, like, also does war seem like the right thing to do right now? Like, I... I don't want to have a war when we just lost so many people without one. And if we go to war, we're just going to keep losing people. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that's what we need as a country, like for morale, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So Mbaku pretty much changes his mind from the beginning of the film to now. Yeah. This is when he says, um, yeah, he's like, this is when um, Mbaku says, uh, uh, do you know what his people call him? They call him Cuckoo Klan, which means the serpent god. <laughs> Cuckoo Klan. Yeah. Um, Cuckoo Klan. Um, and uh, he's like, the you know, these people, they they destroyed us. <laughs> you know what we're fighting against. Do you think you could lead us against that? Mm-hmm. Um, and she, she gives the line, which I like. Um, is my mother's life not worth eternal war? And yeah. I think that's the point when in is like, just kind of, of course it is. Yeah. Of course she is. Mm-hmm. But you have to ask um, yourself if that's what your mom would want. <laughs> yeah. And I think like at that point though, he like realizes that she's set on like, this we're doing path. it regardless. Yeah. yeah. And we've got to help her. Because that's mm-hmm. what I promised her brother. Mm-hmm. And regardless, we're Wakanda, and like he still cares for the people. Yeah, like there has to be someone to you know. There's got to be people left mm-hmm. to make sure that there's people left. Um. So yeah, so they they go to war, and it's a long scene. Um, there's a lot that happens most of it is fighting it's basically a losing battle until Shuri is able to kind of get the upper hand um, she traps him in the thing there's some fight scenes we see uh, the iron heart mm-hmm. uh, the iron heart and the night angels design mm-hmm. and the night angels the iron heart suit does look dumb I'm not gonna lie it's like it looks <laughs> It looks like um, a plastic toy. Yeah, it looks like a toy. It's just yeah. not. It's not cool or badass. It's just kind of cute. Mm-hmm. Which, like, whatever. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry to those of you that do, but I do. I don't care. <laughs> like, it's overall design. I'm not mad at. But like, at the end of the day, it it does look like a plastic toy. Yeah. There's also like no context as to why it looks like that. Yeah. Like, we don't know enough about Riri to, like, justify that it should look like that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, because it's like, if someone else had made it cute like that, and that was, like, a thing that they did, just part of their personality, like, no one would be complaining. But Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, yeah. Um, They're able to trap Namor in in the heater. And honestly, that's kind of a brutal fight that they have. Oh, she yeah. gets into the desert and is like, all right, we're going to fight. Um, she rips his wing off, 
Or, Dude, yeah. I was yeah. like, ah. <laughs> I actually cringed at that part. Like, yeah. Not like cringes and like, oh, that was cringy, but like cringes and, ugh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that feels bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. And like when he's just like, Dude, they're just killing each other. Basically, like that was that was a tough fight. Mm-hmm. I was not sure how it was gonna go. He straight stabs her. He stabs through her into the rock. Yeah, like and she he... has to break the spear so that she can get off it. Yeah, that's where I physically cringed. I yeah, was, I was like, like, oh, Ooh. I can't do that. Mm-hmm. The only thing that stops this fighting is that, like, she's about to kill him. Basically, mm-hmm. she gets the upper hand with the with the heat. Um, they're in the desert. She blasts him completely. Just she sets that man on fire. <laughs> yeah, he's completely dried out. He's probably very close to death at this point, and she's about to give him the final blow. But then her mother comes to her from the ancestral plane and their connection with the Black Panther, or through the Black Panther, um, and is basically like, "Remember who you are." little lion king (laughs) which honestly they had the same they said the same exact thing in the first black panther so i'm like that was fun Mm -hmm. um and she's like okay i get it now she doesn't kill him in the moment that she could and instead offers an alliance for peace and basically says you and i are the same right now we are angry and we're letting our anger control everything that we do. But if we keep going, like nothing, there's not going to be anything left for us to love and protect. So we need to like recalibrate what we're fighting for. Yeah. Well, they they, they do a flashback um, kind of like of her history and his history. And they like have them as foils. Yeah. Of like having the, yeah, like beautiful cultures and like, there are all these great things that we're just not thinking about because we're so angry. Mm-hmm. Well, it shows too, like, like we're gonna like destroy those how, things. Like, at, well, at first, when they first met up, right in mm-hmm. um, Telecon, um, you know, same history, same anger. They're on the same path, but this is the defining moment yeah. where their paths split. Yeah. And so she offers him an alliance, um, that they have peace, and he accepts. Yeah, well, the the line is, um, yield and Wakanda will protect your oceans and your people will live. Vengeance has consumed us. We cannot let it consume our people. Um, so that's Good when she, line. yeah. And so she's kind of like, you know, we we are both in pain and we both suffer. Let's not pass that suffering on. Yeah, let's not pass it on. Instead, we can make an alliance to protect each other. Mm-hmm. We don't have to do this. Like, when or? Oh, we skipped over it, too, a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to throw it in. Uh, but Okoye and Atuma get to reprise their fight, and Okoye wins. Oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> that was and... that was another good fight. Yeah. And then I'm pretty sure after, like, it's pretty much over. Let yeah. They wrap it up with a... Uh... Uh, Riri gets to go back to Chicago. Um, she gets her car back. Shuri literally searched the river for all of the parts to put them back together, which is adorable. Mm-hmm. Um, she Shuri also plants the heart shaped herbs. Mm-hmm. So they're gonna have a nice little garden again. Um, um, yeah, that's and then pretty much it, except for there's the, the end credit scene. Uh, well, so you've got, um, also Namor, uh, he and, um, Namora are talking and Namora is just kind of like, we should have just killed them all. We could have killed them all. Um, why'd you stop us? And he like gets really manipulative about it and essentially just says like, they're going to get in trouble and they'll only be able to turn to us. And they don't say like whether he's going to help or not. And I kind of wonder if he's just going to betray them and just like not help. Yeah. He's like, right now they're the best ally we can have. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's also, yeah. Yeah. So he's like, he's already plotting Mm -hmm. essentially kind of like, it feels like his revenge. Um, But we don't know if it's going to be revenge or help. 
because uh, they mm-hmm. kind of left that part uh, open. That was probably um, find out in his solo movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For a later date. Uh, but then we also have Shuri's um, inauguration. And she skips her inauguration, and that's when M'Baku shows up. And he essentially kind of gets the throne. <laughs> yeah. Um, and for me, like, I took that as, like, she finally listened to him. Like, he was trying to advise her this whole film, you know, in memory mm-hmm. of her brother, like, in his pro- in the promise that he made him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once, you know, once uh, Shuri kind of, like, realizes um, that he, like, out of this whole time, he was the mature one. Yeah. Um, he was the one making the right decisions. He's like, the one the who the best choice for Wakanda. Yeah, he he's the one who protected Wakanda when she, you know, kind of went and um And even from the first movie. Yeah. He was the one to give them shelter. Yeah. Um so I, I think that's why she doesn't show up. I think she kind of realizes she's like, I'm not ready to take the throne, but Wakanda mm-hmm. needs a leader. And so she told him, like, hey, look you're going to be the best choice right now. You need to take over. Yeah. And also, she still has has to finish her own personal, like, she still has to reconcile with all that she's lost in a way that doesn't Mm -hmm. endanger her entire country. (laughs) Yeah. Um... So yeah, she doesn't show up to the inauguration. Um, we find out in the end credit scene that she's gone to Haiti to visit Nakia. Um, she's brought the burial garments um, with her, and she plans on burning them there. They're going to have the ceremony. And Nakia is introdu- or introduces her to... Toussaint. Or to Tala June, yeah. The what I like when she was burning her funeral funeral garb is they don't have a soundtrack. The soundtrack does come and play like right before the credits, mm-hmm. um, but instead of having a soundtrack or really kind of like any type of sound effect, they just have the sound of wind, which yeah. calls back to when the mom was talking about how in her grief she found T'Challa in the wind. Mm-hmm. That's great. So good. Mm -hmm. yeah now we all know that uh t'challa had a son nakia and um he does she does say like oh did my mom know and is given like Mm -hmm. the kind of like piece of like yeah she knew like she was able to meet him which is heartwarming Mm -hmm. yeah so good what would you rate the movie I mean, I've already watched it multiple times. I think about it a lot. Mm-hmm. I'd probably give it like an eight. Give it a nine. Nine out of ten. Mm-hmm. Because I'm just like, they did the best job. Like, I believe that they did the best with what they were given. Yeah. Circumstantially. And to have to rewrite a script in that tight of a turnaround. Because I like mm-hmm. we do have the script um, up on our Discord as closely to the... Like, I'm not sure which version it is. This one's the version that was May 8 of 2021. Mm, that might be the final. I think, or yeah. Extremely it's one of close. the last yeah. ones. Um, so it's fairly close to what we see on screen. If anybody's interested in reading it, we have the link in our Discord. And uh, sweet. Okay, I've read a lot. Mm-hmm. Not of, I, I haven't read this script um, necessarily, but I've read a lot of uh, Ryan Coogler's scripts, and they're all just like, he's such a good script writer. <laughs> <laughs> It's just very good. So, I mean, I would encourage you guys to read it just from like a filmmaking or scriptwriter perspective. Um, because he's pretty good when it comes to script writing. Um, do we want to play FMF and then give recommendations? Uh, yeah. I think 
like out of the, I think there's only three men: Mbaku, Ross, and Namor. Oh, I mean, like maybe Atuma, but does he count? Did you kill Monger again? <laughs> oh, kill Monger, Mbaku, and Namor. That's I like good. that better. That's that's a good good little roundup there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh god, I don't know what I would do. Yeah, no, I'm like, that's actually really hard because they're all very ejected. Yeah. Excluding, okay, so excluding what they look like. Just off personality. Yeah, that's what I'm also trying to figure out. I'm like, personality-wise? Because, like, they're all hot, so it's like, eh. <laughs> I'm like, who cares what they look like? Um... Friend zone killmonger. Uh fuck Namor and Mary and Baku. That's funny. I was gonna say friends and Namor fuck Killmonger. Mary and Baku. <laughs> <laughs> so that's only because I think Killmonger's a touch too violent for me. Uh Namor's not there yet. <laughs> I mean, like, as a kid, he didn't as a carry kid, it out. I don't know. I I think he took a large so part. Like he'd have he'd be a good friend to have, you know. Just keep that in my in my back pocket <laughs> as protection in case <laughs> in case of emergency. Please break. Um. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that would be my answer. Definitely chime in um, in the comment section or on our Discord or Patreon um, who your pick would be. Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, I'm very curious, actually, as to, like, what people would pick. Um, so, yeah, I guess now we have recommendations. Mm-hmm. You want to get um, Yeah, well, because it's pretty simple. I, I pretty much just said any superhero movie. <laughs> um, probably specifically uh, Marvel movies. Um, I didn't really think that hard on it. What would you recommend? I feel like Creed 2 would be a good choice, just in um like similar writing well it's written by the same guy mm -hmm. directed by the same guy um but also like story wise is kind of that like anger versus uh like or like revenge versus um having something to fight for you know mm -hmm. is a similar plot line there so i think that that would be a really good movie to watch if you like this one i mean you can watch that one they end the first one because that one's also really good yeah <laughs> yeah um definitely watch the first one i think mm -hmm. if i had to like specifically recommend a superhero movie um thor ragnarok because like thor also has to deal with losing his father and then coming to terms with whether he's worthy or not yeah I was also going to say maybe um, Captain Marvel, but that was more out of uh, both lead superheroes have the kind of mm -hmm. like thing of like, like their external and their internal um, conflicts are very similar. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, like their internal conflicts are kind of like yes, I'm angry about things. I like one of them is for like they might be for different reasons, but they are very much driven by like an anger. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The only difference is that like for Shuri, her anger is going to destroy everything. Whereas for can't remember her name. As for Captain Marvel, she's been told that she's not supposed to have anger this entire mm -hmm. time and that she needs to control it. Whereas for her, it's exactly the thing that she needs to embrace 
Um, yeah, to make herself stronger. Yeah. I feel like I had another one. I just can't remember it right now. It's okay. Um, I I tried to think of one that had like a good mother daughter relationship that kind of was like similar to this one, but I couldn't. Um, I've recommended this one before. It's called Fast Color. Mm. It's uh, Gugu and Bathura basically has these powers that, like, for her have only been, like, bad. Um, and she ends up having to go back home and dealing with the fact that her daughter also has these powers. Um, and her daughter this whole time has been staying with her mother. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's it's very much the generational like okay we've we all have these maybe not gifts or powers or whatever but like I have to come back home and like take responsibility of the power that I have and train my daughter on how to use it I owe it to my daughter to like get to know me um the reason she left was a lot or had a lot to do with the fact that like she almost killed her daughter (laughs) Like, because of her powers and not being Mm -hmm. able to understand them. And so she left with, and left her daughter with her mother so that she would be safe. Um, And basically just coming to terms with, like, all of that and, you know, the reconciliation of that. Uh, It is technically a superhero movie. Like, well, I don't know if it's a superhero movie. It's definitely, like, they have a power. Uh Um, It's also very indie. But I, I think you can get it on... It's either, like, Hulu or Amazon. Uh, let like me look this up, because actually, I, you, like, every time you mention it, I have wanted to watch it. Um, color. But it's very symbolic. Oh, I was supposed to watch this, because last time you recommended it, I pulled it up. Um, I believe it was on Hulu, but then it left. Yeah, nowhere for free right now. Dang, that sucks. But it is pretty good, so I would mm-hmm. recommend that one as well. All right. A uh, shout out to our patrons, Susan Johnson and Kawana Coleman. They are our VIPs. Thank you guys so much for your support. Um, if you guys um, that are listening want to support us, you can support us through Patreon. Um, or by continuing to listen and share this podcast with your friends and family. Um, Thank you so much for listening, and we will be with you in the next one. Bye. Bye.